This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Ingersoll Tillage, specializing in seedbed solutions. Whatever seedbed challenges you have, Ingersoll can give you the right tools to get the job done. For more information, visit IngersollTillage.com. I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. AGCO reported its fourth quarter and full year 2019 earnings on February 6. For the quarter, the company reported net sales of about $2.5 billion, a 3.3% drop versus the fourth quarter of 2018. Net sales for the full year were also down 3.3% at $9 billion. Looking at net sales regionally, North America and Europe Middle East were the only two regions to show growth in the fourth quarter. North American sales were up 1.8%, while EME sales were up just 0.2%. South America saw the largest drop at down 20% versus the fourth quarter of 2018. Asia Pacific Africa sales were down 13%. Martin Rickenhagen, Agco's chairman, president, and CEO, says their results were impacted by higher than anticipated new product warranty costs. Warranty expenses increased by about $23 million in the fourth quarter. This was primarily due to field product improvement campaign costs to support new harvesting products, the company says. Looking ahead, AGCO is forecasting relatively flat global demand in 2020. CNH Industrial also reported its fourth quarter and year-end earnings on February 7th. For the quarter, consolidated revenues were $7.7 billion, down 6% compared to the fourth quarter of 2018. For the full year 2019, consolidated revenues were $28.1 billion, down 5.5% versus last year. Ag revenues for the full year had a similar result, down 6.2% versus 2018 to $11 billion. The company says the decrease was primarily driven by lower industry volumes in North America and rest of world markets, coupled with actions to reduce dealer inventories in the second half of the year. This was primarily offset by price realization performance across all geographies and sustained aftermarket activity. Fourth quarter ag revenues were $2.9 billion, down 7.2%, compared to the fourth quarter of 2018. Looking ahead, CNH Industrial says it expects farmers' sentiment to gradually stabilize during 2020, even though soft commodity prices remain under pressure. The company says it will continue to manage production prudently until it sees signs of improved end market demand, particularly in the first quarter. CNHI will maintain strict cost disciplines and accelerate its simplification and optimization initiatives while continuing to invest in precision and digital farming solutions. This week's dealers on the move include AKRS Equipment, Robertson Implements, Bob Mark New Holland, and LF Trottier & Sons. Nebraska John Deere dealerships Greenline Equipment, Stuthite Implement, and Plains Equipment Group announced plans to merge their businesses creating AKRS Equipment Solutions. The new dealer group will have 27 locations across Nebraska and parts of Kansas. The deal is expected to close by the end of March 2020. New Holland dealership Robertson Implements has acquired four locations from Moody's Equipment. The dealership now has 11 locations in Alberta and Saskatchewan. The North Battleford and Lloyd Minster locations of Moody's have been purchased by Novian Brothers. Bob Mark New Holland announced plans for a fourth location in Napanee, Ontario. The new store is expected to open in spring 2020. Vermont John Deere dealer L.F. Trottier & Sons announced plans to sell the family-owned business to a large Texas-based distributor of John Deere equipment. The dealership has two stores in South Royalton and Heartland, Vermont. Now here's Jack Zemlicka with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thanks, Kim. Digital connectivity is taken for granted in many areas, but high-speed internet is still absent in many rural areas throughout the country. According to a 2019 USDA report, if expansion of reliable digital connectivity into rural farming areas were achieved, the benefits could result in a nearly 18% increase in total production, which could equate to more than $50 million in annual gross benefit for U.S. agriculture. Government initiatives to expand rural broadband appear to be gaining momentum, as the FCC voted in late January to advance a $20 million plan to improve broadband connectivity in underserved rural areas. The Rural Digital Opportunity Fund plan is an extension of a 2018 program which allocated nearly $1.5 billion 
to create broadband infrastructure for more than 700,000 rural homes and businesses across 45 states. The improvements could have short and longer term benefits for farmers and precision service providers, says Todd Jansen, attorney with Jansen Ag Law in Indianapolis, especially as automation continues to expand in ag. If we're talking about increased field connectivity, that would be very valuable because we're hearing and seeing more and more talk about using artificial intelligence and machine learning on equipment. For that to work, you have to have good connection to some form of cloud-based processor. Because your artificial intelligence doesn't usually just exist on the device. It's usually connected to some larger mainframe or server where it can combine data and information with other users as well to make decisions. Another factor in the expansion of rural broadband is the development of 5G wireless connectivity. The gradual rollout of the network, which began in 2019 by select service providers, is designed to provide higher bandwidth and lower latency to a higher volume of digital devices. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Jack. Artsway Manufacturing had a solid fourth quarter to finish off its 2019 fiscal year. This was the strongest fourth quarter the company has had since 2014. At the end of the third quarter of 2019, Artsway Agricultural Products segment sales were down 18.4% year over year. For the full year, ag segment sales were down 5.8%, largely due to a strong fourth quarter. The last quarter of the year saw a 59% year-over-year improvement in ag product sales. Overall, Artsway finished 2019 with a 16% improvement over 2018, recording $22.9 million in net sales for the year. Now here is Associate Research Editor Ben Thorpe with a report on the results of the latest Ag Economy Barometer from Purdue University. Thanks, Kim. Purdue University's Ag Economy Barometer rose to 167 in January, a 17-point jump from the 150 reported in December. The rise was mostly attributed to an increase in optimism about future conditions in agriculture. The index of future expectations rose to 179, while the index of current conditions was mostly unchanged from December. The improvement in future expectations coincided with President Trump's signing of the Phase 1 trade agreement between the U.S. and China. The percentage of farmers who expect the soybean trade dispute to be settled rose to 69% in January, up from 54% in December. That percentage has been rising since July, when 22% of producers said they expected a quick resolution to the dispute. At the same time, a total of 80% of farmers in January said they expect a favorable outcome to the trade dispute, compared to 72% in December. Despite the improvements in future expectations, the Farm Capital Investment Index fell four points in January to 68. The index is based on a question that asks farmers if now is a good time to make large investments in things like machinery and buildings. Despite the small decline in January, the index remains stronger than it was in late summer, when it ranged from the high 40s to the high 50s. Back to you, Kim. And now from the Implement and Tractor archives. New Holland traces its roots back to 1895 when Abram Zimmerman founded a blacksmith shop in the Pennsylvania town of that name. In order to expand his business, he began retailing stationary engines to power farm machines such as animal feed mills, but his customers often found that the units froze during harsh winters. This led him to develop a freeze-proof engine of his own design. Although it underwent changes of ownership and management, the New Holland Machine Company grew to later develop a number of successful farm implements, notably the first self-tying pickup baler. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lestermedia.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us.